you sent me the link to watch it and I did not watch it. I am so scared to watch brooding. <laughs> Talk to me about the, the genre of environmental horror, because my first thing is like when I watched Terminator the first time and I saw, I mean, that to me was like, oh my God, that could happen. So tell mm -hmm. me about this genre of environmental horror. Sure. I think a lot of people are familiar. Uh, when you think of horror, you think of either ghost stories or slashers uh, or sometimes psychological horror is a very common um, thing that we talk about. But really, um, uh, there's a genre known as eco horror, environmental horror that, uh, you know, has its roots all the way back to King Kong. Right. It's the idea that yes. uh, people uh, encounter something inside of nature uh, that is terrifying and foreign um, in a way that, you know, we think we've conquered but haven't. Yeah. So tell me what the premise of brooding is. It's a short film and it's going to be at the Westchester Film Festival and you're showing it other places. Tell me about the film. Sure. Brooding is the story of a, uh, a woman uh, who's a photographer and she goes deep into the California wilderness to photograph a new invasive species. Um, and when she does, she returns home uh, and slowly becomes more and more convinced that uh, the bugs have returned with her. It totally happen. <laughs> it's uh so the the yeah it's really uh is a lot about and the lantern uh, fly right doesn't yes, it have the spotted lantern yeah. fly really like okay. that set me off there are a few there are a few sort of origins well one pennsylvania is already sort of infested with uh stink bugs which i think is so interesting because they have their origin i think in in east asia i think they're originally from sort of these chinese climates and i believe like in the 70s and 80s on tri shipping freighters sort of made their way eventually to pennsylvania where you can see they kind of thrive probably even better than their original environment. Um, so that was a big inspiration. Um, the spotter lantern fly was a, a, a big inspiration. Um, I'm in Brooklyn right now, but uh, it uh, was in Philadelphia that summer of 2020. Everybody was talking about it. And then eventually it's New York. Everyone is like, oh, we just found out about this. I'm like, no, 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 no. this has been there. <laughs> um, and the third thing is uh, I went to California to uh, direct and produce one of my plays in 2022. And uh, getting interested in the sort of um, the the climate and the environmental issues that exist out west, um, I thought was super interesting, and especially the uh, medfly attacks in the 1980s, which I did not know anything about, but it was the sort of uh, environmental terrorist group that was uh, releasing uh, uh, medfly bugs into uh, crop fields in order to attack the crops. And so as a result, um, the California state government was flying over the state and dropping pesticides on, you know, pretty much everything. Oh my God, that is so scary. So <laughs> that how, when you went to shoot Brooding, tell me about the process of making a short film and how it's different than making a feature film. Sure. I think uh, the biggest difference I would say is in a short film, you have uh, such a small amount of time that you really don't have, uh, you can't have a traditional three act structure. People are very um, familiar, I think with, you know, the sort of screenplay format or at least, you know, sort of writerly people, but it's similar to the difference between a novel and a short story and the way that it's probably harder to write a really good short story than it is to write a really good novel. That when you're working in this like super reduced form, you have to be so economical about everything. Um, yeah. So at the beginning of the process- We often is, say in, my, in writing, we say, if you can write short, you can write long, but the reverse is not true. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. it, it's so for me, uh, you know, I sort of- but Do I you know how long, long it's going to be before you like you you have a script well where do you start you start with the premise and then you write a script are you intending to make it x number of minutes or you kind of how does that work so uh the rule in short films is that you should have a short film that's under 15 minutes or just about 15 minutes if you want to play uh the most widely that that is the most accepted um length of time for most festivals and it's going to do you some big favors anything over 20 minutes gets pretty it gets much harder to get accepted into things. So there's that uh, sort of, uh, that practical rule that limits you. Um, mm -hmm. I think the first cut of it was about 20 minutes. I think in my head, I was like, oh, we'll be the people who earn the 20 minutes. I will definitely say in the editing process, you find out very quick that reduction is your friend and just making it as sort of minimal, direct um, and compact as possible um, mm -hmm. to bring the audience in quickly and sort of present them thing after thing after thing. Um, it really does a lot of favors for, for this. But story. we are in this era where like Oppenheimer, what was that? Three days long. I mean, some of these. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah, the, the incredible thing about Oppenheimer is that it's a three hour movie and I don't think any scene is more than a minute long. I mean, it really is like, it's, it's like true. TikTok, you know, watching that movie. It is. Okay, so you you know you have to get it in around 15 minutes. So mm-hmm. where you have the premise, you have the time. So you write the script, you storyboard it. What's your process? Sure, so uh, I wrote uh, several really terrible scripts. I come from a background in, in uh, poetry writing and playwriting where, uh, you know, the author is sort of everything in those, uh, in those. Forms. As it should be. Yes. Yes. As it should be. And, and <laughs> your words are the most important thing, but obviously once the interesting thing about working in film is, uh, the image is dominant. It really is a photographer's yeah. medium before anything else. So very quickly, um, after I had a script, um, the actual sort of bulk of, of developing it happened, um, in coordination with my cinematographer, whose name is, uh, Amanda Ferrarese. She's an, uh, AFI graduate. Um, and she's mm-hmm. from Maryland herself. So we sort of understood, uh, you know, the sort of East Coast e- uh, ecology um, and developing it with her was sort of talking about these images, um, you know, the sort of tones that we're trying to express. So it's about, you know, a sort of isolation and a domestic relationship. This woman comes home and she feels distanced from her boyfriend and, and sort of aggravation. What are the images uh, uh, that make you that invoke those senses right so mm-hmm. um the sort of centerpiece scene i could give you some do you need some or <laughs> you know we all i think every every generation loads for themselves uh just how small a house can be when there's two people in it yeah uh, yeah yeah. and yeah. then when you're talking about something like there's there's blood and gore there's you know in a i know in brooding and and just in horror in general how do you think about how to get that across in images in a short film. Sure. So here I'll talk about the first uh, idea I had, the image that I thought, oh, this is the thing that I'm after. I sort of, I knew I do want to do something about bugs. I knew I was interested in the environment. I knew sort of Pennsylvania was somewhere in there. Um, but the first image I had that made sense was uh, a uh, woman um, who ends up being uh, my very good friend and lead actress, Hadley Durkee, um, sticking her hand into a uh, garbage disposal. And not just like sort of gently, but I mean, like I, originally in the original script, it sort of goes up to her bicep. I wanted it to be almost sort of magical, but this mm-hmm. becomes a sort of central piece of self-harm um, uh, and uh, a little bit of mania, a little bit of psychosis, but also a sort of domestic setting that is set inside of the kitchen. There's clearly, mm-hmm. like, there's sort of levels to to what's going yeah. on here. Well, but once I had... Mm-hmm. Once I had that first image, um, it sort of felt like everything fell out from that. Because then you sort of have mm-hmm. to ask the question: Okay, what would cause somebody to put their hand down the drain and turn the and turn the machine on? Yeah. Um, um, okay, so you shot. Where did you shoot it, and how many days did you have to shoot it? Um, we shot it in two and a half days uh, on location at our producer's house in uh, the Studio City Hills in California. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so did you, how do you get money for this? I know that like, that's a big deal to try to get funding. What did you do about that? Yeah. So like any, you know, sort of uh, uh, any sort of fledgling entrepreneur, you need a a lot of startup money. You know, it's, it's exactly the same in the arts. Um, I sometimes think, you know, people think there's sort of these two different worlds between the arts and sort of business, but really in the United States, they're, they're incredibly intertwined. Um, Mm -hmm. so, you know, like anybody else who has an idea and wants to sort of, um, get started with it, uh, you know, there was a lot of reaching out to friends and family. There was a sort of public campaign that says, um, you know, personally, uh, me and the other actors had just done a play called Get It Together in Los Angeles. That play is actually also set in Pennsylvania, it's set in Wynwood and, and Philly. Um, and, you know, we sort of have a network of people who appreciate, you know, the work that we're doing. And would like to support us. So I would say I have the actual number somewhere, but I would say about um, I would say I contributed about 40 percent of the budget. Um, and then I went to private backers and got, I think, uh, about six or seven thousand dollars. And then we had a GoFundMe that raised about five thousand, which they take some fees out. So it was just under five thousand. I think for the actual uh, two and a half day shoot, we we had liquid about twelve thousand um, dollars. So that covered you know, the, the cost of the rentals, um, and the crew, um, and feeding everybody and the sort of, you know, ancillary things that you're going to worry about, um, and paying the actors. 
Um, and then from there, you go into what's called post-production, which is mostly me sitting behind a computer desk um, in Villanova and, you know, sort of working on this and fine tuning it until my um, cornea have, have burnt out. Um, but there are some other expenses that come after sort of you need a sound mixer who actually ended up being a, a St. Joe's prep grad that I was connected with through the, the prep alumni network um, and just some other sort of uh, uh, other work and other fees that come along. Um, and then you sort of need another round of money that just goes towards festival submissions, which are normally between 10 to higher end is $60. So, um, wow. yeah, <laughs> and that's all, you know, that, that has, has just been me, um, so far, but completely worth it and definitely a part of the game. So from the time you got the idea until the movie was finished, how long did it take? I would say I started having the idea in August of 2022. That was just after we finished uh, our play in LA. I knew I wanted to do something with the two actors, but we had just done a sort of comedy drama. And I said, I want to do something in horror. Um, so I guess I wrote the script in uh, October of 22, um, started pre-production in January of 23. We shot in uh, June of 2023. And then we had the, the final cut in February of 2024. So, um, yeah, it's about uh, what is the that? Westchester Film Festival in April of 2024. Yes. It's great. It's great that there's a, a more, uh, a quicker turnaround. I mean, that's creatively yeah, rewarding, I, kind of. Yeah, most certainly. There's a, uh, you know, I, I also um, sort of do theater, and there are some plays that I've been working on. There's one in particular that. I have been working on for about seven years and I've sort of staged productions of it, but you know. It's because you're a writer and you have to write. <laughs> we write when we write, like, and we can self edit, right? So yeah. sometimes we're our worst enemy. It's like, well, what if I just move this part to this part? And then it's like, oh, and then, I, I mean, you could do that to yourself forever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the helpful thing ends up being like, okay, I have booked, you know, for the, with the play, it's like, well, we booked the theater space. Like we have to Deadlines do this. Deadlines help. We're going to use our $3,000 deposit or, you know, for the film, it's like, okay, well, I have, you know, hired all these people who are expecting, you know, I have to pay out these, the $6,000 in labor costs, like this one weekend, like right. that's what we got. So sometimes those, because I understand, you know, I, uh, in college, I wrote a lot of poetry and I wrote uh, prose and, and fiction. And that is a tough discipline it's, yes it's all you and the, and the amount that it is a, a solo exercise was the thing I found most difficult so for me that's the thing totally were, agree I, yeah. I have two books published and people are like don't you want to write another book and I'm like no you sit in a room all day and talk to yourself yeah that's what you do <laughs> yeah it is just mania inducing it's like anything like whenever <laughs> that script goes to another person you're like okay I'm this is better <laughs> it's it's right. A, and I always say the thing that that is the stop mark for writers, you're going to run out of either time or money. If you yeah. have plenty of both, you're just going to keep going or I will just keep going. So that's yeah. why, yeah, deadlines and budgets are essential. But let's yeah. talk about before we talk about um, get it together. Let's mm -hmm. talk about your local connections. So you're from Philadelphia. You grew up in Villanova. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was born uh, born in Philadelphia, grew up in Villanova. Uh, I went to Wayne Elementary. Um, I went to Walter Mercy Academy, um, and then I went to St. Joe's Prep. Nice. Wayne Elementary is right around the corner from me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and you live in Philadelphia now, or you're in California? Yes, I, uh, well, honestly, for a little bit of uh, uh, context, I actually, uh, my dad passed away last February, so I had been. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, I had been out and about. I went to Boston College and right after that moved to uh, New York and I was living in Brooklyn. I was working as a as a model. COVID happens. I'm back and forth in Philly and New York, blah, 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 and sort of um, trying to build a little artistic life. Um, but for the past year and a half, I was in uh, Pennsylvania. I'm just talking to you right now from Brooklyn, which just adds another layer of confusion because I'm here for, you know, just a month. Um, but uh, does that answer the question? I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. So what did you study in in college and what were your interests in high school? Like, did you know that you wanted to go into writing and or filmmaking? Yeah, I always just uh, wanted to be uh, uh, a writer and director. 
I knew that that was a phrase from like very early on. I sort of was trying to figure that out. I have a very uh, sort of obviously now formative memory of my dad talking to me and saying like the, the only thing that is common in every good movie is that it has a good script, which filled me with all sort of neuroses when I was, you know, 12, where I thought I had to, you know, write the perfect thing. Um, yeah. In high school, I acted in the, the Cape and Sword shows at the prep. Um, and I started writing like little scenes then that they would perform at the night of scenes. Um, and it was only uh, in college, actually, that I think I started taking it uh, quite seriously. Well, the first uh, element that I had was um, I studied poetry under a poet named Allison Adair. She's from uh, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Um, oh. She has a first collection now called The Clearing. I highly recommend this. It's all about, you know, she's another Pennsylvania writer. And I think we sort of uh, understood each other on that sort of the psychic level where cool. um, that place that you're from really does a lot of the heavy yeah. for you um and i was very lucky because uh in addition to having her as a teacher there was a sort of uh a contest put out they were doing a thing called new voices the theater department was mm -hmm. um, and i was just an english major who sort of had a, a love affair with theater i was never like a sort of i was always you know at arm's distance but they say oh you know submit to this we're gonna the department is producing two shows i at that time had been directing a play called this is our youth by kenneth lonergan uh, he is the guy who made Manchester by the Sea. Um, yes. And uh, he has a really, really great play. But I don't know if you've ever seen this play. It was just on Broadway with Michael yes. Sarah and Michael Polk and some years ago. Um, yes. Yes. And it is about uh, very affluent, sort of misguided youth in 1982 in the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side. And they're sort of, I mean, they're like doing cocaine and heroin. So I, I had been directing the show and I knew um, that... I liked it. I knew that it represented something I thought people didn't talk about. But I also felt, you know, uh, in 40 years later, people were growing up in the suburbs. The sort of texture of things was different. You didn't have that background. You know, I, I wasn't from New York and I didn't know anything about New York. And I sort of had to yeah. research that. Um, and so I was on spring break and I thought, I have to write something to turn it into this competition. If I say, you know, I'm a person who wants to be a writer, I have to turn this in. Um, and I wrote uh, a one act play called Get It Together um, and submitted it. And you know, by luck and grace, I actually wrote it at the Saxby's in Rittenhouse Square, which is now gone. <laughs> um, but that's uh, funny. That's where I wrote my first book. It wasn't a Saxby's, though. It was something else. <laughs> it's a magical corner right there. Yes, it's just lots perfect. of good vibes there. Lots of good vibes. Um, and I was very lucky. Um, it got selected. It got produced by the department. They built a huge, beautiful. So set. yeah. So get it together. Yeah. It's you've had it in different iterations, right? You've yes. had it as a play, and now it's also a film, right? Yeah. So there was a film version that we did. This was during COVID, when you know, sort of every single theater thing was down. We did a uh, a about forty five minute uh, version of the play that was filmed and as sort of in a, a, a realistic way. It was, realistic film adaptation mm -hmm. um a tough one definitely i will say that was like the sort of first excursion into film where i realized one people need to not talk nearly as much dialogue you know what what works on stage does not readily translate to film at all that's why i say you know it's a photographer's medium because yeah. i was the person who was like here's my you know hour-long uh single room single scene play let's just shoot that and then you mm -hmm. find out, oh, okay, the grammar in film is completely different. What is like, good and what is bad? So? Why is that? People, I think, um, unless you're working with people that are simply incredibly, incredibly good, not to knock any of the sort of actors and people I work with, but I'm talking about, you might have seen uh, the HBO Scenes of a, Mar Scenes of a Marriage. Um, I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, those are all like, you know, single scenes for the most part or long dialogue scenes. Um, when you're doing that, you just need a, you need to figure it out sort of perfectly because what you'll notice when you watch movies is most scenes are not longer than three minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that's a, that's a sort of a screenwriting rule is don't have anything longer than three pages the benefit that you get in film is that you can move rapidly through a succession of locations and characters and settings uh -huh. and moods. And whenever you have a scene change in a theater show, the lights have to come down. A bunch right. of people come on stage and move stuff. So what is easy and entertaining and keeps people's attention in film is really, really different from how it works on the stage. 
Um, oh, the, the main one is always going to be that uh, in film, if you have an idea, you should represent it with an image rather than representing it with any dialogue, which just goes back to, you know, the sort of origin of film as a as a as a silent medium, that it was entirely photographic at one point and sound actually comes on later. Wow. Interesting. All right. And so Get It Together takes place in Wynwood, right? Yes. Wynwood and then uh, a temple, uh, a temple apartment. Okay, so did you film it in Wynwood? Uh, we filmed it at my house in Villanova many years ago. Okay, so you transitioned from New York to to that. What kind of changes did you make to make it be set here? Um, hmm. It was uh, the play is always set um, in the same bedroom, but um, sorry, I might be a little confused. I'm just. Did you have to like give different contextual clues to make it like you know when you're setting up the the bedroom? Did it have to be, you know? different because it was here than in a city yeah i think what you are describing are all at least for this um at least for that filmic version you're asking much better questions than i ever asked at any point in that that was sort of a <laughs> it was a um the script was always said in this one would you know sort of a uh house party spare bedroom and that's what got produced in boston and then I, you know, sort of by a roundabout way, met some actors in New York. We said, let's go film it in Pennsylvania, which is where it was originally set. So it was sort of uh, setting accurate. Um, but uh, we did not make enough changes, quite honestly. This is sort of regarded as like, OK, a, a very expensive lesson that I learned um, because uh, I don't know if I have an exact reason, actually. This is a sort of a really good subject, but it's definitely <laughs> not the one I was expecting, but I do appreciate it. Yeah. Um, okay. So what about, let's go back to brooding and tell me about how you decided that would be the title. Sure. I wanted to pick something um, that had something of a double meaning. I guess mm. I, I was interested in... Um, the behavior of drug addicts and uh uh i have some personal experiences where i've, I've been very close with people who are um habitual drug users mm -hmm. and the way that they self-isolate um, mm -hmm. lock themselves in a room and do not want to come out mm -hmm. so there's that sort of uh the physical aspect of brooding that it's like oh i'm shut off there's the psychological aspect of it of thinking repeatedly the same thought or a negative thought or sort of thought spiral. And I thought it would be so interesting to take that sort of um, psychological and physical experience of drug use and sort mm -hmm. of pair it with um, the brooding in the sense of uh, giving birth to uh, a number of uh, insects or sort of uh, a number of sort of beings. <laughs> the insects just creeps me out yeah but yeah it's so and then um so it's coming to westchester the westchester film festival in april you've shown it other places right yes it had its premiere at the uh new york city uh indie theater film festival which is a small festival uh where we actually premiered that digital version of get it together very good research okay. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and uh that is a festival that is for uh, sort of like theater people taking the step into film, um, which is becoming more and more common as the as the two disciplines, I think, merge a little more um, than they have in the past. Um, it will be playing at the First Takes uh, Short Festival at the Ambler Theater on Wednesday, April 24th. So, And then it'll be playing on uh, the 26th and the 27th at Westchester. Um, and then this summer, it's playing at the Jersey Shore Film Festival. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. So thank if you. people want to see it, where can they, can they see it like online or something? Or how does that, you can only I see it at festivals? Special, yes. I actually, you know what? I have a special link that I am not supposed to give out because the sort of agreement is uh, it has to do the festival run before it's uh, available online. Uh, okay. I'll send it to you. Well, you know what? After, after, the, after the festivals, we can publish that if it's okay with you, we can share it with our um, community online after the festival run. How's yes. that? Uh, that sounds great. <laughs> okay, great. So when you're coming back to like Ambler or Westchester or whatever, and you're sitting, like, do you sit in and watch the audience watch the film or do you stay outside? How do you experience it, I, that? 
you I always see the audience. It really is the the ultimate, you know, sort of indicator. I had a very uh, beautiful time at the at the New York um, at the at the New York premiere, uh, watching people watch it, and um, that is when you really learn what it is. Um, especially when you spend so much time looking at it on a, a you know a monitor screen, um, or sort of going back and sort of picking takes and blah blah blah, sort of assembling this piece. Yeah. But once you have it and it's done and it's no longer yours that's sort of when it is what it is, right? That's, that's, that's the final, the final piece that other people are going to understand. And the way that they understand it is better than the way that you understand it. But I'm sure any artist, um, you know, needs to start, uh, start understanding, um, when I express myself this way, do people take that in the way that I expect, or do they get something else out of it? And definitely, yeah. I don't think, you know, there's no human communication that is a one-to-one, -one, you know, perfect mind. Memory. Yeah. And the sort of interesting thing about art is that people, you know, experience and understand it in different ways. Um, but that being said, when someone, you know, watches a girl stick her hand down the drain and they're recoiling physically and, you know, in your mind, you know, well, we shot that over the course of three hours and we cut all the fuses and her hand was out of it. And there was never, you know, sort of any danger. But then to be able to, you know, other people watch it and they see danger uh, and you think, you know, it's a nice little uh, artifice I put on yeah. Well, I know a lot of actors who don't watch themselves on film. And for me, my work is now digital, so I can always change something online. But when I, I never read my books after they come out, came out and I never read, I was in newspapers and magazines for a long time and I never read anything once it was published. Cause what am I going to do about it? You can't, yeah. go, you can't exactly. go back and fix it. It is what it is, which yeah. is why I love being digital now. Cause I can change it all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is interesting to put something into the world that you have created and then people give you their opinions on it. And for me, usually it's positive, but there are certainly is sometimes that it's negative or it's a, people don't connect with it in the way you intended, as you said. Yeah. Um, so as you go forward with your career, what do you think is next? Like what? So this brooding has been done for a while. What else? What's next for you? Uh. I am hoping to do a Philadelphia production of Get It Together um, as a two act play, a sort of a new second act from our, our lessons that we learned in Los Angeles. Um, and I would love to uh, bring it to the place that it's about. Um, I'm very nervous, obviously, because, you know, there's some, I'm sure you've been, you know, from a place and away from the place. Sometimes it's easier to understand the place when you're away from it. Um, yes. But that is uh, hopefully what I'll be doing in the in the fall or spring. Um, and I have another uh, a shorter film project with the same um, actress that I am uh, developing right now. That's amazing. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you, meeting you in person at the Westchester Film Festival. And we will put all of the links to all of your things on our website and our social media. Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much for making the time to talk with me. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it too. And I'll send you a trailer and I have some sort of like uh, little photos and stuff I can send if you would appreciate that. Absolutely. I'd love to see all of it. Great. Thank you so all much. Right. Thanks so Bye. much. Okay.